That's the pastor's wife. We have enough problems with pastors, preachers, not adhering to godly standards as it relates to the word, meaning we've got a lot of pastors who do not hold to the teachings of the scriptures. They go outside the scriptures. They lean on their feelings. Oftentimes that even shows up in their lifestyle because now we have problems with pastors who live a lifestyle that just doesn't say that they are a pastor. Now, some of you have seen this video before that's going around about the the gospel singer slash pastor, I believe he's still a pastor, I'm not sure he is, I don't know he was, Dietrich Hatton. Dietrich Hatton has had some issues in his life that just doesn't seem to show that he is very interested in being godly or at least having a repentant life uh, from some of the sins that he's had in his lifestyle. Uh, he and his wife, his former wife and their marital issues, but doesn't seem to be pretty repentant of that. Him speaking out against Christians who had a problem with Beyonce's album, Church Girl, and the songs. Didn't have a problem with that. Dietrich Haddon likes to skirt the line. I don't know much about his, his wife, his current wife. I know they haven't been married very long. I don't think so. But what we see happening at his 50th birthday party, that just should not happen. <laughs> Now, the first question that I would have just even walk into the room if, if I'm there or even he should have this question before they leave the house is, sweetheart, are you going to wear that? Because the Bible is clear on how a woman ought to dress. In 1 Timothy 2.9, Paul says, likewise, I want women to adorn themselves proper with proper clothing, modestly, modestly, Dietrich. And discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments, but rather by means of good works as is proper for women making a claim to godliness. That's the issue. Now, the issue about braided hair and gold and so forth, that's just speaking kind of of that time. But the point is to kind of make a spectacle of yourself and to be modest and to uh, show the example of a woman who claims to be godly. The shirt that you have on with the little broad deal, whatever. I'm not sure what it is. Again, I'm not on a woman's fashion, but that's not what you would think that you would see on a preacher's wife. That's not what you think you would see on any mature man's wife. This is his 50th birthday, and so I don't know how old she is. I'm going to imagine that she's a little bit younger. I don't know how, how young, so I won't go there. But that's just not a good look for the pastor's wife. Not saying anything about her look. Okay, fine. She's a nice looking woman. But still, you shouldn't show that. As the old saying goes, leave a little something to the imagination, uh, not for us to see and for other men to gawk at. But then getting back to the dancing, the lewdness. <laughs> and he seems to be enjoying it. He's, he's loving it. She is acting out a sexual act on her husband in front of the people and he didn't really have a problem with that first of all she's this is something i guess she she knows how to do she's been doing it i don't really have a problem with what you do at home but when you bring this outside one the dress but then two the action and then everyone around you laughing shouting cheering you on and so forth and then there's a problem with that paul says this about the qualifications of a pastor or preacher it's a trustworthy saying. This is a trustworthy thing. If someone aspires to this, he says the person should be then above reproach. The husband of one wife, in other words, not having more than one woman, um, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospital, able to teach. And you should have also, as we go down further, he says that you should have a good reputation, not just with the people in the church, but also outside the church problem here we have that is one the reputation that he already has is not that very good it's not that good but then the reputation amongst folks outside the church that they'll look at this and they will impugn the body and that in lies uh, a huge problem therein lies a huge problem that you should not do anything to bring down any sort of condemnation or um, uh, ill repute or bad look on the church paul says this way that whatever we do we should do it to the glory of god whether you eat or drink or dance, 
do it all to the glory of God. Why? Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, which is what you're doing. You're bringing offense to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit to satisfy myself, but the profit of the many so that they may be saved. That's the goal, that they may be saved. Not that you enjoy yourself. Listen, if you want to enjoy yourself and your wife, fine, do that at home. But that's not it. And then when you hear the response that he gives, it's just really disheartening. I want them to run their mouth because it's something to talk about. It's something to, to, ha to have a conversation at the table about this because it's time to be free in God and without being in sin. It's time. You go find you a wife that you can grind on you and pray with you <laughs> oh when it's to be done. Don't get no woman wrapped in swallowing clothes. I've been there, done that. I can't do that. So... so it's time. It's time. Did you say we don't do it. Swaddling clothing. <laughs> if we don't do it, man, we're going to lose so many more marriages, man. We got to show them the truth. Man, That's we all love you, bro. Stop we love bleeding. You, bro. Free in God doesn't mean free to do whatever you want to. It doesn't mean that we have absolute liberty to even look like we're sinning. Remember, the Bible says to avoid the very appearance of sin. That's not what he means by being free in God. Not to go and do what you want to do and, again, to bring a bad name or black, bad mark against the body that's what's happening but what you're doing is you are not only simulating the sex act but you are giving approval for anyone that has anything else to say that it's okay to do this in public uh the problem with the, the marriage with marriages in america isn't that men and women um aren't just letting themselves go enough no matter of fact that's the that is the problem they are letting themselves go too much they are releasing their inmost inhibitions and no one is saying, listen, there is a godly factor that you have to remember to have at all times, whether you're in the house or outside the house. And so what Dietrich, what Dietrich Haddon is doing is clearly wrong. If it were left to the confines of his home, fine, do what you want to do. But when you bring this out here and you want to hoist your you and your wife's sexuality upon everyone else, that's not a good look. And the only way that you show someone the truth is by the word, not to go outside the word, not to do what you want to, but do it his way. Again, do everything to whose glory, not yours, Dietrich, nor even mine, but to the glory of God. And so this, this, this just should not be. And rather than defend yourself, come out, be mature, be godly and say, you know what? That was the wrong thing. We apologize and we'll do our best not to do this again. But if that's not your heart, then I don't expect to see an apology or anything repentant about that. So, but guys, let's be clear. This should not be. You are disrespecting, even if your wife doesn't know it, you are disrespecting her by even allowing this to happen and then to take part in it. Because now you've reduced her to a sexual object instead of a godly vessel of God. Amen.